Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. You guys see the thumbnail, you know what's going on. We're going to be talking about the Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks today. I have a lot of thoughts on this and I did want to wait to post this because when the lipsticks first came out there was a lot of speculation. Jaclyn hadn't made a formal announcement yet so everybody was still kind of up in arms about what was going on and nobody knew anything so I wanted to wait until there were a little bit more details so I have Jacqueline's history and backstory and her video that she posted giving me some information I did meet with Donna Lopez and I will link that video and we discussed these lipsticks at length that footage didn't make it into the video but I will link that video as well that footage I'm going to put in this video so you guys can get a beauty executive's insider opinion on what went wrong with these lipsticks. You're going to get swatches of the three that I purchased, as well as some zoom in up closes on some of the imperfections I received. And we are going to go all in on these lipsticks. So if that's something you're into, make sure to keep on watching. And please don't forget to subscribe because I do upload three times a week. And that is the best way to stay up to date on all the fun stuff I'm posting. I know I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to. I am optimistic. I believe the best in people, and I wanted to give Jacqueline the benefit of the doubt. So you're going to hear my opinion. I'm going to talk a little bit about Jacqueline's, and you are going to get a professional beauty executive's opinion. Please don't go off in the comment section negatively about me, Jacqueline, Donna, anybody. This is objective. I want to try and present facts, and that's what I'm doing here. So let's please keep it positive and jump right into the video. <music> So first thing I'm going to do is just apply. I know that this is a dead horse at this point, but now that Jacqueline has posted her video talking about what happened, now that there's a little more info, and I was actually with Donna Lopez last week, and we kind of had a little bit of a discussion on that, and I will drop some of that footage in here as well, but I'm going to start applying these. So I did get the... Nude Moment Trio, which comes with the shades That Girl, Sophia, and Perfectionist. I will be doing swatches of all three, maybe. Let me open this up so I can just show you guys. Of the three lipsticks, not all of them came perfect. I will say that only one of them was what I would call a perfect lipstick of the three. So I did contact customer service, and I did get a full refund. Refund. I did get a full refund from Jaclyn Cosmetics for what I purchased. I did not yet hear back from customer service if they will be sending replacements or if they are just refunding, but at the time, I did get my money back. So for the people who are outraged about having issues with their product or things not exactly working out, they are paying back product that did not work out. So first, I'm going to open Perfectionist, just so you guys can see, a perfect lipstick. Nothing wrong, no holes, no hairs, no nothing. I am going to pull up this one, which this is that girl. It came frosty. It came, I'm going to have to zoom in. It did come melted, bent, and if you see, there were a few little hairs on the tip, which again, you will, oh, I'm not focused. You will see in the footage I have with Donna what that is exactly. And then the shade Sophia has like one little Nikki blemish here, but other than the little imperfection right there, this shade also came pretty well. So one perfect, one okay, one a little off, but let's try them on. I'm going to start, I think I'm going to go lightest to deepest just so I don't have an issue. So I'm going to start with that girl, which is the one that was the least perfect. Let's try it on and wish my lips good luck. So this is definitely a shade I would need to use with a liner. It is a little bit, um, I want to say pinkier than I thought it would be online. The swatches looked a little peachier, but I don't dislike it. I would just need to line in order to make this one work. But once again, this is that girl. Next up, I'm going to take the shade Sophia. It's a little bit deeper. This is like the terracotta e nude that I typically go for. So to my lip color, this is actually what I would consider my perfect nude. 
definitely a little more on the peachy terracotta tone, but this is the type of nude I typically wear. Although you guys see me in a lot of like peachy, but this is more my lip color, a little deeper. And this is Sophia. And the last one, this is Perfectionist, which was the only perfect bullet I received. This is the one that Jacqueline described as her perfect nude. And I can see why. This, I think I like this more than Sophia. I think this is going to end up being of the trio, my favorite shade. Yeah, definitely very nice. Okay, so it is very comfortable. It is a very soft formula. It is one swipe pigmentation. I did go over it a little bit just because at this point in the day, this is the fifth or sixth lipstick I've put on. So my lips definitely need a little bit of exfoliation. Not sticky, not tacky. There's definitely a little bit of wax in there. I am going to, at this point, drop in the footage from my visit with Donna so you guys can see what she thought uh, some of the issues were, and then I'll be right back. So that is an awesome segue. Not my girl! So I got the Jaclyn Hill lipsticks in the mail literally on my way to come here you did. today. You so me. I have not tried them. I opened them and I sent you some pictures. Yep. And what is your professional opinion? So I will say, as somebody who is a micro influencer <laughs> and a I mean, that's a real word. It is. I know. So I love it. somebody who is a micro-influencer. I love it. And a consumer, but yes. not on the brand development side. Yep. I have never made a lipstick. Yep. So which is the one that was... So I will say that this one that I got, Perfectionist, perfect. Was actually perfect, which is actually hilarious. There, perfectionist right. was perfect. There is no fuzzies. There is no indents. There are all of the things that people are saying online. This lipstick was... Perfect. Perfect. This one, however, was less than perfect. So we've got some... Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll okay. insert some B-roll because <laughs> that's not happening. Yeah. We'll insert B-roll. But it was not perfect. Mm -hmm. And there's definitely some craters and some fuzzies. Can I and see it? You absolutely can. Oh, yeah. Okay, so can I actually see the box? I'm going to read the ingredients. Okay, so the first thing that you have to know about this is that it's a super soft formula. Mm -hmm. That's like number one. Now, I have not swatched this, first of all. A couple of disclaimers. One, this is my first time seeing any of these products live. Um, secondly, I have actually met Jacqueline, and she is a doll, like an absolute angel. Um, and she is truly, like, beauty obsessed. Like, she is, like... The community it's like it would be like if you created a brand tomorrow and then like this happened to you spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> that's what it's like you know so like i i'm going to be careful with what i say but i am going to tell you what i believe is the situation here so the the formula first of all you should all know she because of the fact that she is an expert in beauty she's been very very specific to include a lot of oils a lot of butters um, and they are very high up in the ingredient list. So if you look at the actual ingredients in the formula, you can see that's a very, very soft and buttery formula. And you can even actually, now that I'm saying that, she even puts that as like her tagline, which is like so rich, so buttery. Um, so that is like number one. When you create a super soft formula like that, these kinds of issues are gonna happen. That is one of the reasons why, and again, this is why it's so interesting when people who like claim to be experts like go through and they're like, look at the ingredients and this is why they're doing this. But like, there's a couple of things. Number one, it's kind of like a big beauty rule of thumb that you never ship bullet lipsticks in the summer. That's like actually like a very, um, like a industry wide thing. Like when we would do today's specials and big, big items, like it's one thing to send like a single lipstick here and there, but at these volumes, you try to sit limit- in warehouse. Any time, like, in a soft formula like this is bound to have more imperfections. Like, there have been situations where we've shipped tons and tons of lipsticks, um, and we couldn't ship bullet formulas. We would only do, like, lip, like liquid lips because they were already liquefied um, because just the heat in the summer, like, you cannot avoid it even if you've, like, packed them in ice. And, like, who's going to pay to do that? Like, nobody's going to do that. So um, that's number one, super soft formula. Now, that doesn't, you know, I've seen some of the things that they've, they've shown online, and to me, it looks like debris. Like, 
when you think about debris, um, like mold um, is unlikely in my opinion. Um, you know, again, I'm not in this factory, but to me, all of this, like kind of the grittiness, like the pearls, the beads, looks like debris from other products, which can easily get caught in the formula. It can get caught in the mold. Um, so if the mold, the mold, and when I say mold, I don't mean like actual mold growing. I mean the mold that the liquid is poured into to create the shape of the lipstick. So there's a couple of things. And actually, I think I saw someone, maybe it was even Gabby was talking about this because she you knows she created Alamar, so she understands how product is um, produced as well. And, um, I think it's mostly product debris from other things because even I've seen little like beads, little spheres, fibers like from mascara um, formulas and like brow kind of like, um, why am I blanking right now? Um, fibers from like lengtheners. Okay. Thank you. I was like I'm trying to get to the word. Um, there's fibers that a lot of products, you know, use to basically, you know, make your brows look fuller, make your lashes look fuller. Um, Though that's the, uh, what a lot of this debris looks like. When I look at all of the images that I've seen online, even like the little hairs are being pulled out, look exactly like mascara fibers um, and brow fibers that you've seen like kind of in a lot of products. So that's what it looks like to me um, is debris from other products. I don't see mold is the situation here, but I would you know need to do more research into that. But it's a sad situation because for someone who's waited so long to create their brand, um, and somebody who's so passionate about it, because like I said, I, I met her once um, or twice at Home Shopping Network, but if you don't get the right manufacturer, at times they're not always the most upfront with you about what has gone wrong, you know? There's always a million things to blame. It's never their fault. It's always somebody else's fault. Um, and that's just the name of the game in general. But my opinion, formula is super soft. Should have never launched at this time of year. Should have definitely launched later in the year when it's cooler out. Because that does help with the shipping conditions. So a lot of you that received like melted or damaged, like that's super normal for bullet lipsticks in the summer. Like that's why most brands don't typically launch bullet lipsticks this time of year. You'll see them like holiday, fall, you'll almost always see them and you'll see liquids and glosses and highlighters and other things launching during the summer and all, you know, in springtime because of that. So the formula is really good. I can tell by the ingredients, but one of the downsides when you get a formula that is that soft and, and buttery is that you do have issues with the fact that when it scrapes against something, the mold, and like, even you can see here at the bottom where it's like, doesn't it look like it's about to break off? Yeah, like it's settled It's on because itself. it's too soft. Like it's such a soft formula that that's just gonna like And I think even I saw somebody else had posted that they literally applied it one time and the like the whole bullet had moved. And again, it's because it's a super soft formula and should not have, it's either too soft um, and sometimes you do have to make choices, you know, when you have a brand and when you're creating a product, there are times that you have to, you know, sacrifice the fact that you're gonna have a lot of damages when you're shipping. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and secondly, it does look like there's a lot of debris from other products. So I hope that she works it out with her manufacturer because that that is tough and that's that stinks for her. I feel bad because she definitely should not have uh, been put in that position by any means. But you know, you live and you learn. I've made a lot of mistakes in my career, a lot of mistakes. And I think ultimately those are the things that make you better. I mean, I know that's super cliche to say, like everybody says. But it's true. Like because again, this is her first launch. And she I, has, because yeah. she said that she's been formulating 2016, like it's been four years in the making, but she's never produced hundreds of thousands of right. units. It was always lab samples and mock ups. And yeah. obviously, they're not going to present the person formulating it with like no. a messed up one. No. Here's your lab sample. It's right. perfect. And your lab samples are always great. You know, your lab sample, I mean, you send them back a lot, but you know, you get your lab sample, there's never debris in it or anything mm -hmm. crazy. And even when you spot check them, you know, they're going to send the best of the best. So, and I think also too, when you're shipping direct to consumer, that's another piece of this that, you know, this is not a product that's shipping into retailers right now. What's um, what I always say is when you're going with direct to consumer, meaning that it's going straight from their website website straight to you. Um, it's pretty rare that you find somebody that's like really getting it right. Like ColourPop, that's why I'm always obsessed in talking about ColourPop mm -hmm. because they really get it right. But there's very few brands that are getting it right like that um, because you know I can tell you from being in this industry my whole life is that I've received thousands and thousands and thousands of items that we couldn't ship out 
because something arrived and it wasn't the right quality. And we had to send it back to the brand, who sent it back to the manufacturer, and it happens all the time, but we usually catch it before it goes live, or the brands catch it, and then we catch it. So there's a lot of steps, but if you're just a brand going straight to the consumer, you miss there's a couple no of middle steps. Men. There's no middle people to help catch it in the meantime. So, you know, unless you have a super experienced individual who, you know, has super experienced team who has super experienced everybody to, you know, make this happen from head to toe. And you think about ColourPop, you know, they were a manufacturer for many years before, you know, they were the, the founders were like the son and the daughter of, um, a humongous lot, humongous. <laughs> it's a word. <laughs> it's a word. Humongous. Humongous, a humongous manufacturer that had been manufacturing for years and years and years and years. And so when they started ColourPop, they became, you know, epic manufacturers. And so they already had the experience. So it's, again, when you're talking about going direct to consumer, unless you have the experience and unless you really know all of the ins and outs, it's inevitable this is going to happen, you know, especially at these quantities. We're not talking about 5,000 units shipping out the door. This is probably 50,000, you know, units that are going out. And again, I don't know her business, but, um, you know, that's what it seems like to me. Thank you. You're welcome. I, could, I mean, I don't know if it's true. I but. was afraid to put it on my lips. And because everybody right now is like mold and this and that. Right. Oh my God, there's so much out there. It's so sad because again, it's like false information. It's I'm not saying that they're not right and that there's something wrong. There's something clearly wrong. Right. But I don't know that it's exactly what everybody is saying. And when you're looking at the product, you can see it's debris. Like right. it's like you can't like mold doesn't grow into a perfect cosmetic sphere. Right. Like that's debris, you know, the fibers, yes, could be mold. I agree. This, the fibers could also be mascara fibers, which pretty common. Right. You know, I think right now, a lot of the outrage is just that she hasn't responded yet. Yeah. Which, She's mortified. I mean, course. who, who would it be? And think about your most embarrassing moment in life and having it be public and having it be public. And that poor girl has like literally been the butt of like the beauty industry jokes for years. And she just can't seem to kind of catch a break and get out of it. Um, and I feel bad for her, honestly. I'm looking for a nude lip liner. Oh, here it is. Um, I should probably put a lip on, shouldn't I? I'm like, I need a little lip liner. Um, she's literally been sort of like at the like the butt of all of these jokes mm -hmm. for so long. And I'm sure she's just exhausted. I mean, I think about my most embarrassing moments, and I have had plenty of them because I've been – like the new kid on the block. I've been the youngest person in merchandising. I've been the youngest at this. I've never done this before. I had to present to the CEO of this company, the CEO of that company, never having done it before. I have made so many mistakes. I have done and said very embarrassing things in front of very, very important people. I have done a lot of embarrassing things, a lot. And I will say that like to experience your most embarrassing moments professionally in front of people, I mean, it was bad enough for me to experience any of my embarrassing moments just in the small group of people. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine on, in front of the whole internet. Right. All right. So now that you've seen Donna's footage, I'm just going to recap quickly. The fibers, she thinks they're mascara fibers. And honestly, I opened a new mascara today. It was Dior. I pulled it out and I had a very long white hair coated in black mascara. And it looked exactly like what I was seeing online coming off of the Jaclyn lipsticks. So I am inclined to agree with Donna that that's what it was. Also, the little perfect sphere beads, I personally think, just based on what I've been seeing and reading in the ingredient list, I think that was some sort of a wax derivative that just didn't melt down all the way. That's also what Donna said as far as just not fully melting the components down. Jaclyn even said that. So I'm going to say that while a lot of people are saying that Jacqueline might not have been honest, a lot of people are thinking they are old and expired. There is no rancid smell. These lipsticks have not turned. They are not bad. I think that they wear really nicely. I think that they are really pretty. I think they are comfortable to wear. And for the fact that everybody was reimbursed and refunded with their purchases, personally, I think Jacqueline did right by her customers. So I'm going to say that... Hopefully the next time around when these colors come back in stock, things are a little bit smoother. That was that was kind of shady. If that they're a little smoother, the formula is a little more perfected, and that all of these little details are fixed because 
it feels like a really nice lipstick. It feels like a really good quality product. And I would hate for everybody to just think about the bad launch as the epitome of Jaclyn Cosmetics because I don't think that's fair. So I do hope you guys give these lipsticks a chance. I can tell you right now, you will be seeing Perfectionist a whole lot. I've already cleared off a space for it to live right here with my everyday lipsticks because I know I will be using it a lot. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye.